Yesterday, the Biden administration confirmed that the U.S. will airlift more baby food from abroad in a last-ditch effort to halt the worsening formula shortage. The push includes new shipments from Europe and Australia. With some 380,000 pounds of Bub's Australia Infant Formula, or about 4.6 million 8-ounce bottles, set to touch down stateside next week. This comes just after President Biden, under pressure from reporters yesterday, admitted he was not briefed on the shortage until April. Oh my God, that was real bad. Uh, it seems the president, however, is still not on the same page as the rest of his staff. Here's Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre yesterday. When did somebody call the White House to say, this is a problem, you guys may need to get involved? So I could say that, um, again, the recall happened on, the day, day one of the recall, we took action as a whole of government approach, right, with FDA, USDA, as I just laid out. Um, and the president understands, again, he understands how difficult this is. He understands uh, how challenging this is, and we have acknowledged that. Uh, he understands that this is the job of the president to be able to multitask, to get things done, uh, especially when it comes to making sure that your child gets uh, healthy, healthy food. Um, and so that is what is that is what we've been doing. When was someone called here at the White House? to say this could be an issue that requires presidential I, involvement. So I don't have the timeline on that. I, all I can tell you as a whole of government approach, we have been working on this since the recall in February. Well, he understands, Robbie. He <laughs> understands whoever came up with this PRC Oof. deserves a huge paycheck because boy, oh boy, reporters having to work harder and harder every day to get real concrete answers out of people. Biden basically said, yeah, I, I, we didn't know it was going to be this big a problem because who knows anything about this? And they said, well, let, let me clarify. I didn't know. <laughs> Maybe other people knew, but I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's what? <laughs> This should be a good moment for Joe Biden. It is a good thing that they're airlifting all of these shipments of baby formula from overseas. It's something that you were really hot to have happen immediately when this news broke. You know, I don't know if that's at the same time, by the way, that Joe Biden knew about the news right. breaking, but eventually he figured it out, and here comes the baby formula. But instead, it's derailed by a gaffe like this, where he's, he speaks in a, with a level of confidence that suggests he doesn't even really know that what he's saying is inappropriate. The idea that the White House didn't know when the whistleblower blew the whistle back at the end of last year, when we publicly knew about the shutdowns and experts were saying this was going to have a trickle-down effect as early as February, that he didn't realize as the, as the leader of the nation until April, is a real confession of malfeasance. Uh, yeah, it's, real, it's really bad. Um, also, I guess policy-wise, maybe we can make this more permanent, getting some more baby formula from Europe. I, uh, a lot of emergency, um, things we do in emergencies, I sometimes think that could just be standard practice. This was true of some of the COVID uh, stuff when they're like, well, we can't have people eating indoors now. I, I guess we'll have to convert more of our outdoor space into outdoor uh, dining areas. And I guess we'll have to let people like open carry on the streets. Great. Just do that. Just normally yeah. have that be the way it is. I think that's right. If some of the concern about... So I feel this way about drinking openly on the street. Is <laughs> look, I, I'm not going to argue I'm... with you. Let's, <laughs> let's make the whole world New Orleans. That's fine with me. But look, I, I, I do street. think that if one of the concerns was that the European baby formula wasn't labeled properly. It had, you know, a European um, metrics on it instead of American, and that can confuse parents. I would love a place where whatever situation they've worked out right now, if these European factories have a, a an American version of the PDF to print out all the labels in an emergency, I think that's perfectly fine and adequate. But I think the bigger problem is why do we only have, what is it, four manufacturers in our entire country that are making formula. I don't think we should have to re rely on foreign made formula for such an essential product in the United States of America. And what are we going to do? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was a very demonizing look, way. You just I, said foreign. <laughs> look, the reason we're having all of these inflation problems and no one wants to talk about this yeah. aspect of it is that to save pennies on the dollar, corporations have decided to want to move companies overseas. Everybody knows about that, but also not to store any goods on American soil. The idea it's being expensive it's too expensive to store it. 
Now we have a big country and there's a lot of storage facilities, but it's really not an ultimate, I can't afford it. It's a, I don't want to eat into profits to do it. And who's paying the cost of that profit grab of that corporate greed? It's families and these babies who have gotten sick and the couple who unfortunately didn't even survive the crisis. It, it, com but companies will always, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's the way the world well, that's, works. They will that's, always that's try to true. save that's money not true. if it costs too much money to store and manufacture that's here. That's not true. They will and you can, always go elsewhere. So we can lower those costs by looking at the regulatory costs, mm -hmm. the labor costs, et cetera. But we're not going to do that. And so we'll never bring back manufacturing. It's, it's It'll only never true. happen. It's, it's, it's only fiction. true that people who are running co companies are motivated by corporate greed exclusively. When you look at other kind of companies that are worker owned, when you look at companies like Costco, they have chosen a different kind of model because they understand that it's more important for them to keep jobs in their communities than to earn another penny or two on dividends by sending jobs overseas. They understand that it's worth paying workers a living wage no. because they are in it's, fact the workers no. as opposed no. to paying no. out more dividends no. to stockholders. And you see the companies like that being very successful and having high worker productivity, high worker happiness. People stay around in those jobs and they have better work product. But because we're not being all workers fairly. at Costco. We're all consumers of goods and we want the price of goods to be cheaper because we're all consumers Costco's of goods. Costco is pretty affordable. Goods. That's why people like Costco. But generally speaking, they go overseas because not just because they want to save money and make be wealthier for shareholders, but because they can't afford to do it here and the prices strong, are too high. Strong disagree. The we, prices are too there high. Were, there were trade deals that were made in the 90s that specifically motivated these kind of behaviors by the corporate oligarchs that have continued to run this country since basically we had the collapse of unions and the, and the lack of worker power. I think there's a real crisis where we don't have a confidence in the American worker to produce things that the American worker need. It seems to me to be a rather unpatriotic stance that a lot of folks have leaned into that it's just constitutionally impossible for America to do the things that it did for the decades and decades during which America became the world superpower. And I have a little bit of more of a sanguine view about what the country is capable of. The American of. worker is being outcompeted by people who produce more efficiently elsewhere. And I don't have any problem with that because we all, not just the American worker, but all of us enjoy the fruits of that labor being elsewhere in that everything is cheaper, more expensive, and we ultimately live better. Well, that's a longer conversation that we should have over some maybe very affordable cost go coffee, but up next we'll be say, talking uh, about cocktails in the middle of the street, which we should all be allowed <laughs> That's to do. Also a plan. Or baby formula or whatever. <laughs> oh, well up next, Dr. Anthony Fauci says he will step down from his post in 2024, no matter who is in office. That's coming up next.